We welcome you live to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Forest Hills High School, where the site of this first game for the Carolina Disco Turkeys is taking place against the Maryland State representative, Crab Fest All-American. I'm Graham Tuck bringing you the action. Sorry for the delay. We had a bit of a connection issue here, but no such issue anymore. It's Chase Jesse on the mound for Carolina, and we will keep this one going in just a moment. He issues a leadoff walk to Matt Day, the leadoff man for Maryland State. So there's one on with nobody out to start the top of the first for Carolina. This is a new look Carolina Disco Turkeys team. At least in terms of some of the aspects of their lineup. Up now for Maryland State is Elijah Hannibal, the left fielder. He'll take that first pitch down and in for ball one. So there's a lot to go over as we get into this first game of tournament action for Carolina. And we apologize if the connection is still a bit iffy in places. We'll get it sorted out shortly. Jesse gets set to deliver, and it's down and in for ball one. Ball two, I should say, excuse me. Three-0 count, here's the pitch. Right over the plate. Way to get back into it, Chase. It's three and one.
We apologize for a bit of a delay, but in the bottom of the first inning, we are finally live here from Forest Hills High School here in Forest Hills, Pennsylvania. Part of the Johnstown AAABA tournament, the 76th edition in the Carolina Disco Turkeys. In the bottom of the first inning, find themselves down two to nothing to the Maryland State representative. It's Crabfest All-American. There's one out in the bottom of the first. Dion Tubbs lined out to center to start the inning, and Bryson Beber lines that one to second. The throw leads the first baseman away, but on the tag, Beber is out at first for out number two. So there are two down in the bottom of the first inning for Carolina. I'm Graham Tuck bringing you the action here today. This is the first game of pool play for the Carolina Disco Turkeys, and due to some connection issues, we had some trouble getting the pregame started. But we are... All good to go here now, so we'll bring you that information in between innings rather than taking some breaks every now and then. Logan Conklin is the number three hitter, and he will take that one up and in for ball one. Again, two outs in the inning after a line out the center from Tubbs and Bryson Beber grounding out the second. The 1-0 uh, to Conklin, inside corner called strike one, and the count's even. Maryland State's two runs in the top of the first inning came on no hits. Chase Jesse, the starter for Carolina, walked three. And a swing and a miss from Conklin will make it a one-two count with two outs. Matt Day and Elijah Hannibal both walked the one-two batters in the Maryland State order and came in to score. That one's high and away for ball two, and the count will even up. We'll get you the Foothill starting lineups as soon as this inning is concluded for both teams. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and that one plunks Conklin right in between the shoulder blades, and the Disco Turkeys have their first base runner of the morning. Afternoon now, I should say. So it's one man aboard for Hayden Setzer, the cleanup hitter. This is a... Very, very different Disco Turkey lineup than what you may be used to seeing. And we'll tell you all about it in a couple moments. First pitch to Setzer outside for ball one. One-0 -oh pitch is skied high into center. You're going to watch that one fly. That one is way out of here. Hayden Setzer with one swing of the bat. It's a tie ball game. Two to two Disco Turkeys. Man, that is a big momentum shifter right there after the Disco Turkeys had had a rough go of it in the top of the inning. I'll take a moment here. For just a second, but it is two all here in Pennsylvania as the Disco Turkeys have evened it up off of a big fly from Setzer with two outs. That's his third bomb of the year. Now batting number 17, Dino Tharp. Dino Tharp is in now for the Disco Turkeys. He makes his return to the lineup after a couple weeks off and he'll take that first pitch for strike one. Again, a two run shot from Hayden Setzer evens the game up. Counts 0-1 to Dino Tharp. The ball's dead, says the home plate umpire. It's a foul ball. Nobody on in two outs in a 2-2 ball game. Swing and a miss and that's strike three. I apologize it was an 0-2 count. And Tharp goes down on strikes, but not before Carolina is able to even things up and we'll go to the top of the second in a tie ball game. A little bit different from the way we started the first, though. It's 2-2. Two
So we are back here in the top of the second in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where the Disco Turkeys are in a 2-2 ball game with Crabfest All-American, the Maryland State representative, in the 76th annual Tri Triple ABA tournament. We'll take a moment to show you the groups, which were assigned last night at a meeting with all of the players and coaches and managers. Carolina is the number two seed in the bottom bracket, which you see on the right side of your screen. They are a part of Pool C, so they will play each of the teams in Pool C once. Today is against the Maryland State representative, the Crab Fest. Tomorrow it will be against the Youngstown Crocodiles. And on Wednesday it will be against the Brooklyn Cougars, the first of two representatives from Brooklyn, New York. The rest of the teams will play round robin among their pools as well. And the top two from each pool will advance to the quarterfinals, which will start on Thursday. Chase Jesse back on the mound. We'll take a moment to show you your Foothills starting lineups brought to you by Foothills Brewing as it's a 0-1 count. To James Holliday, number seven batter, and now it's 1-1. Matt Day, the leadoff man for Maryland State, plays in center field. Elijah Hannibal in left. LT Jimenez at short. Emmanuel Mercedes at third base. Or excuse me, Emmanuel Morales. Samuel Canella in right field. As that's a 2-1 count now from Jesse. Alex Rivera, the first baseman, struck out looking to end the last inning. And that will be a leadoff walk for the second consecutive inning issued by Chase Jesse. It's drawn by James Holliday, the catcher, in the number seven spot. Michael Bear, the designated hitter, will bat eighth. And he steps up to the plate now. Danny Tavares is on deck, the second baseman and the number nine hitter, and the starting pitcher for Maryland State is Daniel Padilla. Here's the first pitch from Jesse as Bear shows bunt. The throw back to first from Conklin, not in time, but a good idea. It's an 0-1 count to Michael Bear, the designated hitter. For Carolina, the starting lineup, Deion Tubbs in center, no question about it. Bryson Beber at second base for the first time this year, batting second, also for the first time this year. Logan Conklin batting third behind the plate. Hayden Setzer at first, batting cleanup. We'll get you the rest of it after this 0-1 delivery from Jesse, and it's down for ball one. Dino Tharp bats fifth, playing shortstop. Christian Ezel in left, batting sixth. Dane Stewart in right, batting seventh. DJ Musser, the designated hitter, bats eighth. And John Owen, making his return to the Carolina lineup, bats ninth, playing third base. And, of course, the starting pitcher for Carolina, none other than Chase Jesse. Counts one and two from Jesse. Maryland State still without a hit, but they have drawn four walks, seven men through the lineup. Time was called before the pitch. I'm not sure that it was ever granted. The throw back to first wasn't in time. Time was never granted, but it missed for ball two. That is a missed opportunity from Chase Jesse, and it's a 2-2 count. John Owen has only ever pitched for Carolina this year, but he starts at third base today as that's outside for ball three. Owen played third base in high school, and the Disco Turkeys are strapped for infielding depth as it is right now. Owen is scheduled to start against Youngstown tomorrow on the mound. Full count, the pitch from Jesse. It'll have to wait just a moment as he'll make a move back to Holiday at first. It's a 2-2 ball game after Maryland State scored two in the top of the first off of a couple walks, some stolen bases, few errors, and a wild pitch. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed for out number one, and Bear goes down on strikes. You missed the first inning, but Chase Jesse struck out the side. That's already his fourth K of the day, and we're here in the second inning. Up the bat, number two, Danny Tavares. And it's Danny Tavares stepping in for the first time, and it comes with one out and a runner on first. Maryland State still hitless. Bottom of their order. 
Squaring to Bunn is Tavares. The pitch is high. It looked like a pitch out, but nothing doing. It's one up. Carolina's two runs came after Deion Tubbs almost got a hold of one over the center field fence, and it's a short porch, only 372 to dead center, 323 down the lines. Bryson Beber grounded out to second for a quick 1-2, and then Conklin was hit by a pitch, and then Hayden Setzer, very next at bat as the runner goes, check swing, no call, Beber throw very much in time, and that's out number two. That's a caught stealing for Logan Conklin, and he has excelled at that so far this year. That's why he got him behind the plate. And there's two outs in the inning. The count is 2-0 to Danny Tavares. As he did not go around, says the home plate umpire. But Hayden Setzer hit an absolute tank into right center field that he knew was gone off the bat. And everybody else in the park did as well. That one skied into right. Down the line, ranging over for to Stewart. And he'll make the catch along the line for out number three. So we'll go to the bottom of the second, and we will not take a break, as we still have a lot to talk about. The score is still 2-2, heading to the bottom of the inning. So as I was saying, a lot to talk about. This Carolina lineup is very, very different from what you might have expected. No Caleb Smith, no Jeff Davis, no Austin St. Laurent. And so that leaves the starting lineup, as mentioned, in the infield, Hayden Setzer, Bryson Beber, John Owen, and Dino Tharp. Dino Tharp, in the regular season, he finished the season with a great batting average. He was batting 359 when the season concluded. It was top three on the team. Logan Conklin finished the season batting 284, Deion Tubbs 317, and St. Laurent 321. Deion Tubbs almost got things started with his 33rd overall hit of the year and what ended up being a deep fly out and a spectacular catch. You can go back and watch it later if you want. We did not have audio for it, but the center fielder, the leadoff man Matt Day for Maryland State, jumped and had to reach back like Odell Beckham Jr. in order to make the catch, and he came down with it for what was out number one in the bottom of the first. Carolina is the home team in this game, designated as so. As because all of the standings in the pools that we showed you were completely random. The fact that Carolina is number two in Pool C means practically nothing. It just determines who they play and when they play them. So today they have Maryland State. Tomorrow they'll play Youngstown. And on Wednesday they'll play the Brooklyn Cougars. So the home and away designations were decided by a coin flip. So Carolina will be the home team today, and that is the only time they'll be the home team until at least Thursday if they were to make the quarterfinals as Christian Ezel steps in and takes a hack at the first pitch for strike one. So that means tomorrow Carolina will be wearing the baby blues, and they will also be wearing those blues on Wednesday against Brooklyn. Ezel fouled that one off, and the count's now 0-2. To the Disco Turkey left fielder making his first start of the year anywhere outside of the catcher position or designated hitter. Oh, two pitch. Here it is. Popped up foul. It might get out of play. Ranging over to make the catch along the fence. He won't be able to. The Maryland State catcher, that's James Holliday, wasn't able to get to it. He's L staying alive in an 0-2 count and a 2-2 ball game. Other games today, especially in Pool C, which is of interest, Brooklyn Cougars and Youngstown Crocodiles playing as we speak. Ezel swings and misses on that one, and that's out number one in the bottom of the second, second consecutive strikeout for the Maryland State pitcher Padilla. So after giving up that bomb to Hayden Setzer, he comes back with two straight Ks. And Stewart will step into the box now for her, his first hacks, I should say. And that's a called strike one to Stewart over the heart of the plate. DJ Musser is on deck, the designated hitter. That is up in the zone, and Stewart, with his big frame, has to take a hack at it. It's a swing and a miss for strike two. And another swing and a miss from Stewart, and that will be out number two, the third straight K for Padilla. He's found his groove, 
And both pitchers seem to have found their groove after a rocky start to the ball game. Up the bat, number 26, B.J. Musser. So Musser will step in now with two outs and nobody on. John Owen on deck. That's a breaking ball that can't quite find the corner. It's 1-0. Again, we apologize for the delay in the start of the stream. We had planned to go live at about 11.30, and the connection issues delayed that. That's another off-speed changeup caught the top corner of the zone, and it's 1-1. One and one. Two two count, excuse me, one one count, two two ball game, and that makes it one and two. Padilla one pitch away from striking out the side. Here's the one two. Swung on and missed on a ball in the turf. Muster's gonna make his way down to first, and the throw is in time for out number three. So Carolina goes down in order. We'll head to the third inning. The score still the same way we started the top of the second. It's two to two. We're back here for the top of the third inning. Graham Tuck on the call. Disco Turkeys baseball in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The first pitch to the leadoff man, Matt Day, is high and away for ball one. Matt Day walked his first time up. He fouls that one back. It'll even the count. Chase Jesse up to 41 pitches now through two plus. That's an off speed that can't quite catch the corner that's two and one now. Two one from Jesse, here's the pitch. Swung on and missed and it's a two two count now. Jesse already with four Ks. Here's the 2-2, two -two. check, swing. Good job by Day to hold off on that one, and the count will run full. Time is going to be called by Day at the plate. Chase Jesse, the game one starter for Carolina. It's a very important one. You want to get towards the top of the group standings early. 3-2 pitch. Taken high for ball four, and already that's the fifth walk issued by Chase Jesse. Second time that Day has drawn one. Number 
Now batting left fielder, number three, Elijah Hannibal. So it'll bring in Elijah Hannibal, the left fielder for Crab Fest All-American. Day takes his lead at first. He stole second his last time up. That one's fouled back into the fence, and it's 0-1. One from Jesse from the stretch off and running his day it's fouled to the right side the hit and run was on but couldn't keep it in play and Hannibal is down 0-2. They want to thank you for joining us on the Disco Turkeys YouTube channel. We'll be with you today tomorrow and Wednesday at the very least all three games will be at noon and each game will be at a different ballpark here in the Johnstown area. O2 is the count. Here's the pitch from Jesse. Outside, ball one. That's a good pitch to try to get Hannibal to chase in case the hit and run was on again, but no dice. It's 1 2. Number nine from the stretch. You know, 1 2 count. Here's the pitch. Day off and running again. That's strike three called. The throw to second. It won't be in time. Beber couldn't get a glove to it anyway. So stolen base number two on the day for Day, but out number one on the fifth strikeout so far from Chase Jesse. Now batting shortstop, LT Jimenez. LT Jimenez will step in. With a runner in scoring position, he struck out in the first inning. It was the first out of the game. Beber holding Day on at second. He'll step back to his normal position. Jesse fires, and it's swung on and missed for strike one. Jimenez has not been able to catch up to the fastball from Jesse in either of his at-bats so far, and pitch number 50 from number nine is a good one. Oh, one count. And time is called to the plate before the pitch. Good job from Jesse to finish the delivery. 9-1-2 due up for Carolina when we go to the bottom of the third. It comes in the form of John Owen, Dion Tubbs, and Bryson Beber. John Owen set to make his first plate appearance as a disco turkey. He's made some appearances for Carolina as well as for the Ashbury Copperheads. That one skips its way in. And it's ball one. Two two ball game still. Maryland still without a hit. They've drawn five walks. Carolina with one hit. It was a two run shot from Hayden Setzer in the first inning. Here's the pitch. Off speed in the zone. Great pitch from Jesse. He's got the bender working for him today, and it's 1 2. One, two count with one out and a runner on second. Here's the pitch. Got him to swing again, and it's the second consecutive K for Jesse. Second time he's retired Jimenez with the strikeout, and there's two outs. Man, Chase Jesse showing why he got the nod as game one starter. Hitless through two and two thirds. Five strikeouts. Excuse me, six strikeouts now. Two of them of the backwards variety. Day still being held on at second as Emmanuel Morales steps in the cleanup man. A pass ball from Conklin will advance Day to third. Counts 1-0. You can hear 
Coach Kirk Cabana saying you got to give Logan a chance. With a runner on third and two outs, you want to get out of this inning in a tie ball game, obviously. So you want to try to put something over the plate, not something that's going to get taken out of the yard, but something that will be put in play and your defense can make it. something happen to get you out of the inning. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Popped up right side. That one had some exit velo on it, but it's very foul for strike one. Fifty-five pitches now for Jesse in the ball game. Carolina with a slew of bullpen pitchers at their at the ready. Here's the one-one. Off speed got him to look at that one down the middle. It's one-two again. Second consecutive at bat that Jesse's gone to the off speed in a one-one count, and it's been taken right over the heart of the plate for strike two. And if Jesse can get this punch out here, that'd be the second time in three innings he struck out the side. Here's the one-two. Got him to go after it. It's in the dirt. Conklin lost it. He's going to have to fire this one to first. It won't be in time. And on an E2, it is a 3-2 ball game. Wow, that one hurts. Drop third strike. And Morales will advance to first. And coming in to score for the second time today is Day. But it is the seventh strikeout for Jesse. It'll bring in Canella, who lines that one up the middle. Beber off his glove. The throw on the first is going to have to be tough. Not in time. It gets away from Setzer. Advancing to third is Morales. And now, after two errors, there's runners on the corners, still with two down. Man, you got to feel for Chase Jesse here. He's had to record four outs already. So put that one's in your scorebooks as an E4. And you got to find a way out of this inning. It's Alex Rivera. He struck out looking to end the first his last time up. He's got runners on the corners with two outs. First pitch from Jesse set to come. He fires. And that one's low for ball one. Obviously not where you want the pitch count to be nearing the end of the third. This next one will be number 60. Here's the 1-0 off speed. Just missed the zone, and now it's 2-0. Earlier in the ball game, Chase Lockler and Ben Tanneman were warming up. Already three errors in the game for Carolina. Here's the pitch. That one's in there. It's strike one called, and Rivera knew it. 2-1 count. Again, Mor Morales on third. Canella at first. Both of them reaching on errors. Both of them coming with two outs. Off and running is Canella as that one ran very far in on Rivera, and it's a 3-1 count now. So now two runners in scoring position with two outs. And Jesse is not where he wants to be in this count, and that is for absolute sure. Counts 3-1. There's two outs, and you need an out here. Jesse's had to record four already, two outs, two errors. A lot of space down the right field line. Here's the 3-1. Swung on and missed on what was certainly ball four up at the eyebrows, and it's a 3-2 count now. Rivera struck out looking to end the first. Looking to prevent something similar here. 3-2 from Jesse to the right side. This one's going to get through. It's an RBI single. Might be two. The throw from Setzer, or from Stewart, I should say, not in time. And it's 5-2 Maryland State. A big hit there 
from Rivera to atone for his backwards K in the first. It gets through the right side, through the 3-4 hole. It's a two RBI single. Both of those runs unearned, and Cabana's going to come out now. Nobody up in the Carolina pen as of right now. In this inning, the leadoff man, Matt Day, walked. Hannibal, the second batter, struck out. Jimenez struck out for out number two. Morales, the number four hitter, reached on a drop third strike. And it brought Matt Day into score. Canella reached on an E4 on a line up the middle. And it sent Morales to third. And then that two RBI single from Rivera puts us at the number seven spot in the order. Holiday, who swings and misses on the first pitch from Jesse. He's behind 0-1-1. Runner on first, two outs. Here's the 0-1 from Jesse as he fires. And that one's in there for strike two. Good stuff from Chase Jesse showing some resiliency out there. Again, 9-1-2 is due up for the Carolina Disco Turkeys in the bottom of the third. It comes in the form of John Owen, Deion Tubbs, and Bryson Bever. Off and running. Pitch outside for ball one. The throw is very in time, and it looked like Rivera might have got around that one, but he doesn't get the call. It's the second caught stealing and the second runner thrown out by Logan Conklin, and that'll end the inning. So he somewhat makes up for the error that he had on that drop third strike. So Carolina finally gets out of the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Three runs across Maryland for Maryland State, State and the score is five to two. Back here in the bottom of the third inning and stepping in to take some hacks for the first time this year is John Owen starting at third base today for Carolina. He's the number nine spot in the order. And he's the leadoff man in the bottom of the third. Carolina down five to two. The first pitch from Padilla inside corner called strike one. And while this may be the first time that Owen has come to the plate this year, he has been no stranger to dominating the mound for Carolina. And that one's up and in on him. It's ball one. They're leaving the count up. Leading off for North Carolina is number 31, John Owen. Owen this year for Carolina, 2-0 record, 0 0.82 ERA. Two walks, 11 strikeouts on the mound, and... He's behind one and two at the plate. He'll be the starting pitcher for Carolina tomorrow against Youngstown. One, two count. Here's the pitch. Fouled off, and that one had some, some velocity on it. I like that from Owen. Count stays at one and two. 
Padilla has struck out four straight after allowing the two-run shot to Hayden Setzer. Here's the one-two again. Inside, called strike three. Same spot as the first called strike, and Owen knew that he probably should have taken a hack at that one. It's a tough call, but probably would have been the right one, and it's out number one. So that's now five straight retired without putting a ball in play, and we'll go to the top of the lineup for Carolina. Dion 0 for 1 with a line out, a very deep line out at that, and he'll take the first pitch for a ball one. You might notice Dion Tubbs rocking the light pine color bat, and he's ahead 2 0 now, as opposed to his normal pink bat that he had been on fire with to end the season, and that is because tournament regulations require that all bats be standard color. So Dion not allowed to use his pink bat here. He'll take that 2-0 pitch for strike one. And if you missed it, I don't know how you did, but Dion finished the season on an absolute tear, and he hit a big milestone in the last game of the season against the Yard Goats. That one's taken for strike two. And leaving the count up, Dion in 29 starts. 32 hits, 30 runs scored, and 31 stolen bases. Here's the 2-2. Swung on and missed for out number two. It's the sixth straight strikeout for Padilla. And it's out number two. Now batting number two, Bryson Beber. Beber, who grounded out the second his last time up, stepping into the box. First pitch to him. Lined into right center field. This one is going to drop. Beber with a gapper with two outs, and he reaches with a single. And it is just the second hit of the ball game for Carolina, both of them coming with two outs. I like that ambush tactic from Beber swinging on the first pitch. Know that he might be the only one that he gets that's hittable. And gives it a ride. Solid base hit into right center. So with one on and two outs, it brings in Logan Conklin. Beber has become a much better contact hitter as the year has gone along. That's his 16th hit of the year. Conklin looking for hit number 26. First pitch to him outside, taken for strike one. A one pitch is fouled off and quickly Conklin behind 0-2. Here at Forest Hills Junior Senior High, there is a turf infield, very Martinsville-esque, but the outfield is grass, also very Martinsville-esque. Here's the 0-2, it's fouled off. Good job by Conklin to stay alive, even though that one was down in the turf. It was probably ball one, almost certainly ball one, but he couldn't just lay off of it. And an 0-2 count with two outs and a runner on first. The pitch to Logan Conklin after time's called by the catcher. Might have seen something he didn't like. On deck is Hayden Setzer. And you know what he did last time up. Here's the 0-2. Strike three called. And that is strikeout number seven for Padilla on the mound. It's the third of the inning, second consecutive inning that he struck out the side. We're going to go to the fourth inning here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Score still 5-2.
Back here for the start of the fourth inning, Graham Tuck with you. Disco Turkeys baseball, they find themselves down 5-2 to two in the first game of pool play here at the AAABA tournament. Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Chase Jesse on the mound. James Holliday at the plate, who takes strike one. His plate appearance was cut short in the top of the third, and he'll swing and miss on that one. He's quickly behind 0-2. Again, his plate appearance was cut short in the top of the fourth after Alex Rivera was caught stealing to end the inning. Here's the 0-2 inside, just a bit too far in, and it's 1-2. Up and stretching in the Carolina bullpen is Ben Tanneman. Here's the one-two pitch from Jesse. Swung on and missed on a ball in the turf. Conklin will throw on to Setzer at first, and it's in time for out number one. That is the eighth strikeout of the day for Chase Jesse. One of them was a drop third that resulted in a ball that got away from Conklin, a run scored. With two outs, came to Emmanuel Morales. Qu working quickly as Jesse, he did go around, did bear, and it's strike one. Bear 0 for 1 with a K on the day. That one bounces its way in, and it's 1 and 1 now. On the day, Maryland State, the Crab Fest All American team, they have five runs on one hit. Two of those runs are earned. Swing and a miss, and Bears behind on it. It's 1-2. I thank you for joining us here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania for Disco Turkeys Baseball. 1-2 from Jesse. Swung on and missed, and that's strikeout number nine for Chase Jesse. He's one shy of his season high, and we're only through two outs in the top of the fourth. That's just how this game has gone for Carolina. They've had to do everything at the plate, and Chase Jesse is coming through. Ninth batter, Danny Tavares, swings and misses on the first pitch, and he's behind 0-1. Chase Jesse has only hit the double-digit strike counter once this year. It came against the Greensboro Monarchs on July 3rd, the Independence Celebration. That pitch is taken high for ball one. Chase Jesse has hit the 75 pitch mark. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Grounded to the left side. This one won't be a strikeout. Fart picks it up, throw on to first in time to send Maryland State down in order. Crab Fest will... Go back to the field as we end the top of the fourth, going to the bottom of the inning. Score still 5-2, to two, Maryland State. We're back here in the bottom of the fourth. Hayden sets are the leadoff man. When Yard is first time up, he'll take that first pitch for ball one. One of only two hits for Carolina so far. Three hits in the ball game between the two teams. But seven runs. 1-0 to Setzer. That one is high for ball two. 
There are six other games going on right now. We have live scores from three of them, four of them, I should say. Only one of interest to Carolina Disco Turkeys fans. Here's the 2-0 to Setzer. It's outside 3-0. The Brooklyn Cougars are behind 3-0 in the fourth to the Youngstown Creekside Crocodiles. Here's the 3-0. Taken all the way, and it's a four-pitch walk issued to Hayden Setzer. So he reaches base for the second time today. First time he'll actually be a base runner. Now batting number 17, Dino Tharp, shortstop. Here comes Dino Tharp up to the plate for the second time. He struck out to end the first his last time up. Padilla has been on fire lately. That's the first sign of weakness since the home run. In the last nine batters faced, Padilla has struck out seven of them. First pitch to Tharp, low and away, ball one. The other game's in action right now. The New Orleans Boosters, as that pitch is catching the outside corner for strike one. The Boosters of New Orleans are the defending champions. They won it in 2019, the last time the tournament was held. They're up 6-2 to two on the second Johnstown team, Martellus Pharmacy, in the fifth, as that's a pitch out, and it's high for ball two. Pitch number 50 for Padilla. In the fourth, the second Brooklyn team, the Sayo Grays, are up 4-3 to three against the Columbus team, the TNT Knights. Throw back to first, and Setzer just barely got back in time. He got caught napping, and he is lucky to be standing on first right now. The, other, the only other game that we can give you a live update on is between Zanesville, the Junior Pioneers, and the B2 Bulls of Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland's up five to one in the fourth. That pitch is down and in for ball three to Dino Tharp. The other two games in action right now are between Buffalo and the first of two Altoona teams and Philadelphia and the second Altoona team. Neither of them have a live update for us right now. Tonight, the eighth game of the day will be at Point Stadium at 7.30 p.m. between the reigning champion of the Johnstown Regional Paul Carpenter Capital Advisors and the New Brunswick Matrix. The 3-1 pitch is fouled off by Tharp and the count will run full. Christian Ezel is on deck. There's nobody out. Here's the 3-2. To the left side, this could be two. Setzer's going to have to hustle. Throw on to second for one, to first, out number two, double play for Maryland State. And that one stings for Carolina as there's now two outs in the inning and Ezel comes up, struck out his last time up. Part of that string of six straight Ks for Daniel Padilla. Ezel's strikeout was on three consecutive pitches. Here's the first. That one ran up and in on him. It's taken for ball one. You can see Ezel's hair flow in the wind on that one. Here's the one up. Swung on and missed, and that was an absolute heater from Padilla. It's one and one. One one pitch to Ezel. It's high for ball, excuse me, strike two. And Maryland State one pitch away from getting out of the inning. That one's grounded to the left side. It'll be picked up by the shortstop. Throw on to first. Wow, that one looked like he wasn't in time, and Ezel goes down. It's out number three, but Ezel is down. LT Jimenez made the play in time, but this one would hurt for Carolina as they are strapped for defensive depth already. 
And Christian Ezel is down after an awkward collision with the bag at first base. We're going to go to the top of the fifth. It's still 5-2 to two Maryland State. And Ezel is up on both feet. That's a good sign, but... Carolina really needs him to be able to come back into this ball game. He's going to try to walk it off, I believe. Jesse's back out on the mound for the time being. So it will be the top of the fifth. He's L walking it off. It looks like he's got his glove with him, so that is a good sign. Chase Jesse is back out on the mound for the start of the fifth. He's up to 76 pitches now. And Chris Nizel is going to limp out to left field. It looks like he's going to stay in the game for the time being. Top of the order is up for Maryland State, the Crab Fest. It's Matt Day up for the third time. He's walked for... Both of his two trips to the plate so far today. And see if he can keep his streak of perfect on base percentage, perfect run scored percentage going. He's come to the plate twice, and he's scored twice. The first pitch is taken for strike one. Jesse working quickly. Here's the 0-1. Day will hold off, and that one's in the turf, 1-1. One and one. Nobody in the bullpen anymore for Carolina. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed, and that is strike two. Jesse one pitch away from his 10th K of the game. It'll be only the second time this year that he's matched that number. The first time he's matched it, second time he's reached it. Here's the one-two from Jesse, the pitch. That one's down and in, but it's taken for ball two. And that means that this next pitch will be number 80 from Chase Jesse. That one is going to miss the zone, and the count runs full after Jesse was ahead one and two. So a full count for the second straight time to Matt Day. Looking to draw his third walk or maybe get a base hit. Here's a 3-2, high and away, and it is indeed the third walk drawn in five innings for Matt Day. He's already got two stolen bases today. And two runs scored, as mentioned. Up the bat, left fielder, Elijah Hannibal. And the top of the order has proved a tough out for absolute sure for Carolina, but stepping in now is Matt Hannibal, who struck out looking his last time up. He scored a run in the first. A bunt. Hannibal bunts it. That's a great bunt. Jesse's going to have to throw at first, and they got him for out number one, but it's a sacrifice as Day is safe at second. That is a great piece of situational baseball from the Maryland State Crab Fest, and it's a runner on second with one out. So 
So it'll bring in the number three hitter, LT Jimenez. Here's the pitch to him. That one looked like it might have nipped the zone, but doesn't get the call, and it's 1 0. Day at second. He's off and running for third, and it was a hit and run. That one's fouled off to the right side. It'll be strike one. One one count, runner on second, one out. Might be looking off speed here. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Jesse checks and time's called at the plate. Ben Tanneman again warming up in the Carolina bullpen. It looks like he'll be the first one out. One one is the count. Here's the pitch. That one's in the dirt. Two and one. Again, we want to thank you for joining us after the fact if you're watching this back on YouTube in its entirety. The count is two and one to LT Jimenez. One of the day is 0 for 2. Swing and a miss on that one, and it's strike two. Jimenez has gone down on strikes twice already today. This might be number three if Jesse can finish it off. And what a big out number two it would be. The 2-2 pitch from Jesse. Here it is, off and running his day. Off speed, the pitch out, and the throw not in time at third. So it's another stolen base. It's ball three. So full count to Jimenez on the day. That's stolen base number three for Matt Day. And any ball in play would bring in a run now. Three two pitch, here it is. Inside, called strike three. That's number 10 for Chase Jesse, and it strands a runner on third for the time being. Second time this year that Chase Jesse has reached the 10 strikeout mark in a game. And we are seeing a master class from Chase Jesse right now. Through four and two thirds, 10 strikeouts, only one hit allowed. Here's the first pitch to Emmanuel Morales, and it's taken for strike one. A one pitch fouled off, 0 and 2. O2 count with a runner on third and two outs. Here's the pitch. Off speed, great block from Conklin to get that one with the chest protector. Not another pass ball that time. It'll keep it in front of him, and it's a one-two count. That saved a run for absolute sure. That's good stuff from Logan behind the plate. That's why you got him there. And this game could very easily be 6-2 right now. Instead, it stays a three-run deficit for Carolina. One-two pitch in the dirt again. Two and two. You got to be careful with that if you're Jesse. You've already had a couple runs come in on wild pitches and pass balls. It's a two two count. That one's high and away. Ball three. Jesse has let his man back into the count. Morales has worked the count full after being down 0 2. He's 0 for 2 today. A strikeout and an error that he reached on. It was a drop third strike, so really he struck out twice. 
That one's grounded to the right side. Jesse ranging over. And has Setzer made a mistake. The dive to first, and he's safe. Second straight time that Morales has reached on an error. Setzer didn't cover the bag. He went to go get the ball. The run comes in to score, and it's 6-2. to two. And that's going to do it for Jesse, man. you got to feel for him after that. He has absolutely been a workhorse for Carolina today and every day. Ninety-one pitches so far. And that's going to do it for Chase for the – nope, he's staying out on the mound. Tanneman has come in. They're going to try to let Chase get this final out. There are two outs in the inning. Up the bat, number 22, Samuel Cannell. So Day comes in to score on the E3. Morales reaches on the air, and Canella comes in, the right fielder. Off and running is Morales. He's going to be safe at second as that one got away from Conklin. It's 0-1 to Canella. Runner on second now, still with two outs. Time is called at the plate. Here's the 0-1. That one, well, nope, ball one. That one looked like pretty good to me. Home plate umpire had different ideas. It's one and one to Canella. He walked his first time up, reached on an error, and E4 in the third. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one swung on and missed. A half-hearted swing from Canella. And again, Jesse finds himself in a two-strike count. Ninety-fifth pitch, here it is, line to the left side. Owen lays out, can't get to it. Ezel rounding it off and being held at third wisely is Morales. As that was an absolute cannon from Ezel in left. So now with after that double, or single I should say, advancing to second on the throw is Canella. There's two runners in scoring position with two outs for Alex Rivera. It's only the second hit allowed by Jesse in the ball game. Now batting number 13, Alex Rivera. Still two outs in the inning. It'll bring up Rivera, who has the only other hit so, so far for Maryland State. He also has struck out looking. Swing and a miss on a big cut from Rivera on that first pitch. He was looking to make this an even bigger league for Maryland State. Home run would make it 9-2. Ten run rule is in effect after the seventh inning here, by the way. So we pitched 97 from Jesse. Here it is, taken in the turf. It's one and one. The most pitches that Jesse has thrown in an outing this year had been 85 until this contest right here. He's at 97. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fouled off to the left side. Rivera was behind that one, and it makes the count 1-2. and two. Man, you need this one here, Chase. Go get them for you. 1-2 count, two outs, two runners in scoring position. Four-run ball game. Here's the pitch. Got him. Strike three looking, and that's number 11 on the day for Chase Jesse. A new season high, 11 strikeouts for number nine on the mound, and it comes at a big time. He strands two in scoring position, but one more goes across for Maryland State. 
in the top of the fifth. We'll go to the bottom of the inning. The score now, Maryland State 6, Carolina Disco Turkeys 2. We're back here for the bottom of the fifth inning, and the first pitch that Dane Stewart sees is laced into right field for a single, and he's going for two after the ball is misplayed in right field, and that'll result in Stewart standing on second, just one pitch into the inning. Well, how about that? Base hit for number 14, Dane Stewart brings up number 26. I like that out of Dane Stewart. That is a single and an advance to second on the E9. It'll bring in DJ Musser, who's 0 for 1 with a K. DJ Musser into bat with a runner in scoring position. And Padilla will step off. We want to welcome you back to the live stream of Carolina Disco Turkeys Baseball. We've had some connection issues here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. We thank you for bearing with us. If you're rejoining, we will upload this game in its entirety as a recording to YouTube as soon as we can after the conclusion of this one. Runner on second is Dane Stewart. The pitch to DJ Musser is in the turf. It's taken for ball one, and he's ahead in the count 1-0. This will be 60 pitches now for Daniel Padilla on the mound for Maryland State. If you missed it, well, let's be honest, everybody missed it. But in the top of the fifth, Chase Jesse recorded strikeouts number 10 and 11 on the day as that pitch bounces off of home plate. It will be taken for ball two, and Dane Stewart advances to third on the play. So a runner on third with nobody out. Carolina, however, conceded their sixth run of the contest after the leadoff man, Matt Day, walked, advanced to second on a sacrifice bunt, very next pitch, then stole third, and then the cleanup man, Emmanuel Morales, wow, that's a tongue twister, cleanup man, Emmanuel, he reached on an error after a ball was weakly grounded to the right side. It was picked up by Jesse, the pitcher. Setzer, playing first, also ranged over to pick up the ball, and nobody was covering first base in the situation. Jesse dove back to first, but he wasn't in time, and it brought in the run to score. However, Jesse stranded runners on second and third to end the inning with his 11th strikeout of the game. So that's where we stand now. We're going to have time called by Musser before the 2-0 pitch. Stewart stands 
on third. Musser, did he go around the appeal? Yes, he did. It won't even be appealed. The call made by the home plate umpire, and it's 2-1 now. Padilla up to 60 pitches. Chase Jesse exited the contest with 99 and 11 Ks, the most of the year for him. That one's in the dirt. It got away. Stewart won't advance, and a smart decision by 14 on the base pass because that one took a hot hop off of the fencing that is the backstop here, and he would have been out by a mile at home plate. His best hope would have been to get in a rundown. So the count's 3-1 to D.J. Musser. Carolina's down by four. Six to two, Maryland State has the advantage. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and foul tipped into the glove of the catcher for Maryland State. That's James Holliday. And the count runs full on Musser, the designated hitter. 3-2 pitch. Outside corner got him looking. And that is a tough call for DJ, but it is out number one. And with a runner on third and nobody out, you got to get at least one run in here. It brings in John Owen, who struck out looking his first time up. Here's the first pitch to him. Grounded to the left side. This could bring in the run. The throw to first will be in time, but it is an RBI ground out for John Owen, and the score six to 6-3. Well, how about that? The P.O., bringing in the third run of the day for Carolina. So Dane Stewart comes in to score, and there's two outs with nobody on for the leadoff man, Deion Tubbs. He's 0 for 2 today with a line out and a strikeout. Here's the pitch. He squares to bunt, first pitch. And, man, I tell you what, that just shows you how different of a brand of baseball Carolina is playing here in Johnstown because all year long, We've never seen Deion Tubbs square to bunt with nobody on base. And that is an absolute shock with the speed that he's got. But you just got to try to get people on base right now. It's an 0-1 count to Tubbs. He won't square again. That time, outside corner called strike one. And this strike zone that we've seen today is very pitcher friendly. It's been consistent. It's gone both ways. But the corners are almost an automatic strike every time. Here's the 0-2. That one won't catch the corner. It's 1-2. A bit further outside, trying to get Dion to chase now that the zone had been established. Again, we thank you for bearing with us here as we've had some connection issues. 1-2 to Tubbs. Popped up foul, and he'll stay alive. It's still 1-2. and two. Garrett Leftwich and Ben Tanneman have both been warming up in the Carolina bullpen you got to think that Jesse's day on the mound is done, and it was an absolute stellar performance for number nine. Here's the one-two. Bounces its way into the plate. It's two and two to Tubbs now. Daniel Padilla has had a great day on the mound in his own right. He struck out six straight at one point between the first and third innings. He's got eight Ks on the day. Looking for number nine here. Two-two count to Tubbs. Here it is. Got him looking. Strike three called. And Carolina will escape with one run on the board. Or Maryland State will escape, I should say. One run up in the inning for Carolina. Carolina Deion Tubbs with his second K of the day. Nobody left on base, but Dane Stewart's leadoff single proves effective. He ended up on second, advanced to third on a pass ball and scored on an RBI ground out from John Owen. We'll head to the sixth inning. The score is now six to three. Maryland State is still on top. And we will in fact have a new pitcher for Carolina. It's John Owen, so, excuse me, no, Ben Tanneman. I got the numbers switched up. So that means that the day is done for Chase Jesse. And we'll take a quick break, bring you his line when we come back.
We're back here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania for the top of the sixth inning. Chase Jesse's day is done, and it's Ben Tanneman first out of the bullpen. Final line for Chase Jesse, five innings, 24 batters faced, only two hits allowed to go along with 11 strikeouts, but he issued six walks, 99 pitches on the day, six runs for Maryland State, but three errors have resulted in only two of those six runs being earned. Ben Tanneman just about done with his warm-up. Carolina got one across in the last inning to make up for the one that Maryland State led across in the top of the fifth. Four unearned runs for Maryland State and two unearned, or excuse me, one unearned run for Carolina. If we were only going off of earned runs, this would still be a 2-2 tie ball game, but it's not how baseball works. First man up is James Holliday, and he takes the first pitch from Tanneman for a called strike one. That gets you fired up if you're in the dugout. On deck is Michael Bear. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's outside for ball one. Tanneman on the year, a 1-3 record in 15 appearances. That one is lined back to him. Beber will lay out, but he won't be able to get to it. That was a hot shot. Rounding first, heading for second, but he'll hold up. At first, James Holliday with just the third hit of the game for the Crab Fest. And it was an absolute rope up the middle, and it came with nobody out. Up the bat, designated hitter, Michael Bear. So Michael Bear will step in. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Beber is playing very, very far up the middle. There is a massive hole the opposite way if Bear decides to try to push it. He squares the bunt instead, but it's popped up over the backstop for strike one. Same situation that we saw in the last half inning, where with the leadoff man reaching for Maryland State, they try to sacrifice bunt with nobody out to put a runner in scoring position with one down. Counts 0-1 to Michael Bear. He'll square to bunt again, but he won't be able to get a bat to it. He did go around, and he's behind 0-2. Again, we want to thank you for joining us here. We've had some technical difficulties here so far today, so I know that the recordings have been choppy, but we have recorded the game in its entirety, so we'll upload it later. Here's the 0-2. It's in the turf. Opposite batter's box, it makes the count 1-2. and two. Again, the Disco Turkeys will play their second game tomorrow at noon against the Youngstown representative, the Creekside Crocodiles. We're up 3-0 on the Brooklyn Cougars as we speak. That one's fouled off. I stand corrected. The Crocodiles are up 3-1 on the Brooklyn Cougars in the sixth. We have our first final score from here in Johnstown. The New Orleans Boosters, the reigning champions from 2019, have mercy ruled the second representative from Johnstown, Martellus Pharmacy, 12 to two is the final from Point Stadium. Counts still one and two, that pitch is high and away, two two now. Runner still on first is Holiday. This is a two two to bear. Up and in, high corner, and he got him to look at it. Great pitch from Tanneman, and it's a called strike three. First K of the day for Tanneman, 12th time today that the Maryland State Crab Fest All-American team has been sent down on strikes. And that is indicative of the performance that we've seen from both Chessy and Tanneman so far, but primarily Jesse, who had an absolute heck of a day on the mound. Squaring to bunt is the number nine hitter, Danny Tavares, but he'll pull back. And I believe it was strike one anyway, so it's an 0-1 count. Yep, 0-1 on a pitch that just caught the bottom of the zone. Here's the pitch from Tanneman. Swing and pop down the right field line. This one is going to get into foul territory, and Stewart won't be able to make it over to make the catch in time, but it'll still be 0-2. 
almost probably for the better that Stewart didn't get a glove to that because he would have had to lay out and then almost certainly advancing to second would have been Holiday, possibly third. But Tanneman's way ahead in the count at so two with one out and a runner on first. The pitch, grounded to the right side. This could be two. Setzer will just flip onto Tanneman, and he wasn't able to get to the bag. He was called out on the field. We're going to have an appeal. I mean, I've got to speak quietly because this, this could be a development. Yep, they called him safe. Tanneman was nowhere near the bag, and that is the second mishap today between the first baseman, Setzer, and the pitcher for Carolina. The first time it was with Chase Jesse when they both went for a ball that was in the 3-4 hole. And this time, Setzer fielded it. Tanneman couldn't get over to first in time. And it's a f I'm, I'm ruling that one as an error by Setzer again. That's the fourth error of the day for Carolina in my book. First pitch to the leadoff man, Day, is taken for strike one. That is a mental lapse for Setzer. It came with a runner on first, one out. That one's grounded to the left side by Day, but it'll be foul for strike two. Matt Day behind in the count. Score six to three, Maryland State in front. This is the first time that both the bottom of the order and the top of the order have come to bat for Maryland State so far in the same inning. 0-2 today with two on and one out. Tanman fires. Here's the pitch. It's low and away for ball one. Good pitch, but a better stop from Conklin to keep that one from getting to the backstop. Carolina has beaten themselves today so far. Tanneman will turn and make a move back to second. A one-two pitch today is low for ball two. Man, I tell you what, Day is one of the most disciplined batters that I have seen all summer either on the Disco Turkeys or playing for one of their opponents. He's drawn three walks and three trips to the plate today. No and he was down 0-2 before fighting his way back to a 2-2 count, which is where it stands now. Beber playing almost exactly at second base. Here's the 2-2. That one's in the turf as well. Full count, third consecutive time that Day has come to the plate and worked a full count. Three, two. Swung on and missed, and that is the second strikeout of the inning for Ben Tanneman, and it's the 13th time today that a Disco Turkey pitcher has retired a Crab Fest All-American batter on strikes. It's the second out in the inning for Tanneman, and there's still two on with two outs for Elijah Hannibal. He's 0 for 1 today with a walk, a strikeout, and a sacrifice bunt. And that sacrifice bunt proved effective as Day advanced a second on the bunt from Hannibal and ended up coming around to score. He probably wouldn't have, at least on that play, if it hadn't been for the play from Hannibal. He's ahead in the count 1-0. Here's the pitch. And that one is laced to shortstop. Tharp lays out, but he can't get to it. Ezell is going to have to make the throw, and they throw back to second, and the tag, he's out. And the run did not come in to score. No, they say he's safe. The run did not score. I apologize. That was a very emphatic safe call at the plate. Wow, that one gave me a heart attack for a moment. Beber makes the tag at second in time. Very, very high display of awareness from Christian Ezell in left field to make the throw to second rather than try to get the out at home. 
and the tag was applied before the run was plated. So we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. The score is still six to three after a great play from the natural catcher, Christian Ezell. We're back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. Carolina escapes trouble in the top of the sixth due to a great play in left from Christian Ezell. You can rule it a 7-4 put out after a single. And he made the throw to second rather than going home in order to get the tag out. Beber, the leadoff man, will ground that one foul first pitch. And it'll be an 0-1 count to the Disco Turkey second baseman. A new pitcher on the mound for the Maryland State Crab Fest All-American team. It's Joshua Youngberg, so Daniel Padilla's day is done. Just like Chase Jesse, he also went five innings in his start. Here's the 0-1 to Beber. That one's high and away for ball one. They're leaving the count up. Beber, his last time up. Had a two-out single in the bottom of the third. Ended up getting stranded on first. Also grounded out to second his first time up. 1-1, one, one, grounded foul again to the left side, and he's behind one and two now. I feel like we say it every single game, but Beber has gotten better and better as the year has gone along. And his batting average has risen from below 100 at one point to now having one of the better batting averages on this group that traveled to Pennsylvania. He's batting 283 coming into the tournament. It's a one-two count to the Disco Turkey second baseman. Here's the pitch. Low, absolutely roped to the left side. Line that one. And you hear it from the Carolina dugout. He's all over it, but he's just ahead. It's one and two. To count. Here's the pitch. To the right side again. This one's going to be fielded by the second baseman and the throw in time to first for out number one. The play made by Danny Tavares. That's the second time that Beber has grounded to second. So it's the first out in the inning and it'll bring in Logan Conklin. Now batting number six, Logan Conklin. Conklin on the day 0 for 1. He struck out looking in the third. He was hit by a pitch in the first and came around to score on the solo, or excuse me, not solo shot, the two-run shot from Setzer. First pitch is an off-speed, looked like a change-up. It's in for strike one after Conklin took it down the middle. The 
pitch to Conklin. Here it is. Absolutely roped to the left side, rounded to third, and a great scoop at first in time for out number two. That was the most solid contact we've seen put on a ball by Conklin. First time he put one in play, but it was just right to the Crab Fest third baseman. Emmanuel Morales making the play, and it'll bring in Setzer for the third time today. Homered his first time up, walked on four pitches in the third. Here's the first pitch to him, and it's outside for ball one, so that's now five straight balls issued to Setzer after he went deep. Counts 1-0. Here's the tenth pitch of the inning. And another big cut from Setzer, but it's swung on and missed for strike one. A 1-0 count is the same count that Setzer hit that home run in, so he was looking to do the same thing there, just couldn't get a hold of it. 1-1 count, two outs, and another home run swing from Setzer, but it's swung on and missed again, 1-2. and two. Carolina down by three in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's the one-two pitch, and it's fouled off. Setzer will stay alive for the time being. Count still one and two. Here's the pitch again. Off speed, high and away, ball two. Good take from Setzer there. Two two count. Hayden Setzer. And here's the pitch to him. Off speed away. Off speed again, I should say, and the count runs full. 3-2, two, two outs, nobody on. Disco Turkey's down by three. They have not led. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and popped up again by Setzer. It's going to get out of play, and the count will stay full. The 3-2 again, and here it is. Swung on and missed, and out number three. It's the first strikeout of the contest for Youngberg, and it's the third out of the inning for Carolina. So they'll go down in order, and we'll go to the seventh. The score still 6-3, to three, Maryland State on top.
Back here for the top of the seventh inning, Carolina back out on the defensive side of things for the top of the seventh inning. Ben Tanneman back on the mound. And for the Crab Fest, it's the number three hitter, Jimenez. He'll foul that one off. Oh, they're, sa they're saying that ball's in play. I, I don't know about that one. The throw's in time. That is the most awkward thing that I've ever seen. They're going to have an appeal. That ball clearly hit off of Jimenez. It was grounded into the turf. Hit the body of Jimenez. And then Conklin picked it up and threw it to first for out number one. So as it stands, it's G2. And that will be indeed the ruling. So a very aware play from Conklin behind the dish for out number one. So it'll bring up Emmanuel Morales with one out, nobody on. Now batting, Emmanuel Morales, number 19. First pitch, foul tipped into the glove of Conklin and it's strike one. Morales on the day, 0 for 3. He's reached on an error twice, though, and he's gotten to third on both of those times. Scored one of them. 0-1 from Tanneman. Here it is. Outside corner misses. It's 1-1. One and one. One, one pitch. Outside again. And that'll make it 2-1. That one is swung on and missed by Morales on a ball that was down at the shoelaces. Good pitch from Tanneman to get him to chase after it, and it's 2-2. 2-2 pitch, here it is. Outside, ball three. Good chase pitch there from Ben. Didn't get the result he wanted, though, and the count runs full. That one is roped to the left side, but caught on a line by John Owen at third base, and it's out number two. Well, how about that? Showing that he can hold his own over there at the hot corner. And it keeps Morales' on base streak from furthering. Okay, number 22, and now two up, two down for the Crab Fest in this top of the seventh. The first pitch to Samuel Canella is high and away for ball one from Tanneman. That one is fouled off by Canella and it'll make it a 1-1 count now. This next pitch will be Tanneman's 30th. Here it is, 2-1, excuse me, 1-1, now it's 2-1. Here's the pitch, that one's in there and now the count's even at two. So Tanneman one pitch away potentially from getting out of this. Three up, three down, no further runs across. Here's the pitch. Absolutely lined into left. Ezel going back. That one's going a long ways, and it's off the wall. Ezel picks it off on a hop. Throw into second. Absolutely overthrows the cut. And a rope from Canella for his second hit in the ball game is a stand-up double with two outs. And fortunately for Tanneman, that one didn't leave the yard. It was about five feet away from clearing that left field fence. So again, a two out base runner for Maryland State. And he stands in scoring position for Alex Rivera. Now batting number 13, Alex Rivera. Who is on the day, one for three, two backwards Ks and a single, and it brought along two RBIs. First pitch to him. 
popped up left side. Owen ranging over in foul territory. He is not able to hang on to it right along the fence. That was a very, very close play and just out of the reach of John Owen, but it's strike one. Rivera behind an account. He's been the third out three times. Every time he's come to the plate. Off and running is Canella. The pitch outside, but Conklin won't even offer the throw. And in safe at third is Canella, and it's a 1 1 count. Here's the 1 1. Outside again, ball two, same spot as the pitch before it. Here's the 2-1, and that one is also outside. Can't quite catch the corner, 3-1 and one now. Three one is the count. Here's the pitch from Tanneman. Outside ball four, and it is a two out walk issued by Tanneman. It'll put runners on the corners with two down. No action in the Carolina bullpen as of right now. Now batting the new catcher number one, Jordan Daddio. And we've got a substitution at the number seven spot in the order. There's a new catcher for Maryland State. It is Jordan Daddio. Swings and misses on the first pitch, and he's behind 0-1 now. Tanneman going right after the new batter. Oh, and one count, runners on the corners, two down, top seven, Disco Turkey's down by three. The runner goes, it's a hit and run, into right. Stewart coming on, and it's going to drop. Beber couldn't get that one. One run comes in, and being left at third is the new batter, and there's some confusion in the Disco Turkey infield. The score right now is seven to three after that RBI single. Advancing all the way to third is Rivera. Coming into score was Canella. And there's still runners on the corners with two outs. A little bloop single. And the first pitch to the designated hitter, Michael Bear, misses for ball one. Now batting, number 20, Michael Bear. Swing and a miss on that one. And it is now one and one. Bear is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. That one is into right. Stewart coming in to catch that one for out number three, but another run comes in. And we thank you for rejoining us as I believe we are now live again. Might be just a moment. But one run across for Maryland State. Maryland and the score is now 7-3, to three, Crab Fest on top. We'll take a quick break and be right back after this.
back here for the bottom of the seventh. Dino Tharp stepping in for the, the fourth time tonight, I should say, or third time this afternoon. That pitch is low for ball one. Tharp on the day, 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a double play that he grounded into. That one's lined to the left side, right side, excuse me. It's going to be picked up on a hop by the second baseman, and the throw on to first is in time for out number one. So Dino Tharp falls to 0-3 on the day. Carolina down 7-3. to After Maryland State pushed a run across. In the top of the seventh, Christian Ezell steps in now. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the pitch. Bottom of the zone taken for strike one called. Ezell also has struck out and grounded out on the day. It's a no one count. Here's the pitch. Off speed, laced into right center. Coming on to make the catch is the Crab Fest right fielder, Canella, and he'll leap to make it for out number two. That was a hard hit ball, but it just hung up in the air for a bit too long, and Ezell not able to find some grass with that one. It's a quick two outs for Carolina. Now batting right fielder, Kane Stewart. Dane Stewart stepping in now. He had a single in his last time up. He came around to score on that trip around the bases. Here's the first pitch to him this time. Takes that one a bit low for ball one. That's another take from Stewart, and we thank you for rejoining us. It's been a tough go of things today so far, connectivity-wise, but we are back here, bottom of the seventh inning. Dayton Stewart at the plate, and he's ahead in the count 2-0. Two outs in the inning, and that's up and into Stewart for ball three. Carolina has fallen behind 7-3. to three. We're here in the bottom of the seventh. Maryland State pushes another run across in the top of the inning. Dane Stewart ahead 3-0. Swings on a 3-0 green light into left center, and this one's going to drop. It's the second consecutive hit for Dane Stewart, and so the 3-0 green light pays off. It's another two-out hit for Carolina. They've had a couple of them, but haven't been able to do much with them. And Chase Lockler is going to get a pinch hitting appearance. Comes in for DJ Musser. Musser was 0 for 2 with 2 Ks. Here's Lockler in his first plate appearance. The first pitch, a big hack from Lockler. First pitch he sees, but he swings and misses for strike one. Oh, one count. Lockler behind. Stewart on first. On deck is John Owen. Here's the pitch. Roped into center field, but it's directly at the center fielder guy, and with two outs, that'll end the inning. Man, that was a very hard hit ball by the Disco Turkey pitcher making a pinch hit appearance, but it's out number three, and we will head to the eighth. The score as we go, seven to three, Carolina's behind.
We're back here for the top of the eighth inning in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Graham Tuck bringing you the action on the Carolina Disco Turkey YouTube channel. Seven to three is the deficit for Carolina. And in the top of the eighth, there's a new pitcher for the Disco Turkeys. It's Garrett Leftwich making his trip to the mound. And the first battery faces will be Danny Tavares. Here's the first pitch, bounces its way in. It's ball one. Again, we want to remind you that we apologize for the technical difficulties, but at the conclusion of this one and before the game at noon tomorrow, this game will be uploaded in its entirety on the YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch it there if you wish to do so. The count's 2-0 and in favor of Tavares, the number nine hitter in the Crab Fest order. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's outside ball three and left which uncharacteristically struggling to find the zone. Left which on the year, a three even ERA. Here's a 3-0. That one caught the inside corner. A great pitch for strike one called. Here's the 3-1. That one ran a bit farther in. Was looking for the same spot, but it's a leadoff walk issued by Leftwich. And Conklin's going to take a trip out to talk to his pitcher for a little bit. Zach Bryant is loosening in the bullpen for Carolina. Now batting number five, Matt Day. Leadoff man is back up for Maryland. And it is Matt Day, the center fielder. He's 0 for 1. Yet to record a hit, but he's drawn three walks, gotten three stolen bases, and he scored three runs. He's got a runner on first and nobody out. Here's the first pitch, and it's high. It looked like a pitch out, but it's ball one, one way or the other. one oh the count. That one's high and away again, and Leftwich in seven pitches has thrown six that missed the zone. Here's the 2-0. That one finds the zone. Good stuff from Garrett Leftwich, and it's 2-1 now. Way to get back in the count. Maryland State has scored five unearned runs today. Excuse me, four unearned runs. Carolina has scored one unearned, two earned. Off and running is Tavares. The throw won't be in time. A swing and a miss at the plate for strike two. We'll even the count. But it's a stolen base for Danny Tavares. Still nobody out in the inning. Here's the pitch from Leftwich. That one is a check swing that somehow found the barrel of Day, and it'll keep the count at two and two for the time being. Leftwich ahead in the count, two two. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled off again by Day. It'll keep the count at two and two still. Again, as mentioned, this game will be re-uploaded in its entirety on YouTube following the conclusion from the first inning onward with no breaks. So you can go back and re-watch the entire action if you wish to do so. Here is the 2-2. That one's high for ball three. That is the fourth time in five trips to the plate that Day has worked himself into a full count. And in the one trip that he didn't, it was a five-pitch walk. Here's the 3-2. That one got him in the helmet. And that one got away from left, which, to say the least, clearly unintentional. Up the bat, number three, Elijah Hayes. 
But it will put a runner on first, still with nobody out. So now first and second, second walk issued in the inning by Leftwich, and it will draw out Kurt Cabana as Zach Bryant has come in from the Carolina bullpen. Seven to three ball game. Carolina has not trailed, or has not led, I should say. They tied the game in the bottom of the first after the Crab Fest scored two in the top of the inning. And then a two-run shot with two outs from Hayden Setzer evened the game up. The Crab Fest and Disco Turkeys both went through the second scoreless. And then the Crab Fest plated three in the third to take a 5-2 to two lead. Carolina would not get that one back until the fifth after the lead had, be ex had been extended to 6-2. to two. Carolina made it 6-3. to three, And then in the top of the seventh inning, the Crab Fest made it a 7-3 to three ball game which is where our score stands now as Elijah Hannibal steps into the plate with two on and nobody out. Double play ball in effect for Carolina. Here's the first pitch to Hannibal. It's a high heater that is swung on and missed for strike one. Here's the 0 1. That one finds the zone again from Leftwich, and the first time he's been this ahead in the count, it's 0 2. An update in the other game in Pool C. We'll remind you of the groups in a moment. It is 3 3 in the seventh between Youngstown and Brooklyn 1, the Cougars. That one is a defensive swing that's going to get chopped through the four hole. And that one is going to load the bases. The run will be held at third. And so now the bases are loaded with nobody out. Man, you go into that count, 0-2, you're just looking to stay alive and just end up chopping one to the right side that gets through. That's been how the afternoon has gone for Carolina. So it loads the bases, nobody out. For Garrett left, which two walks and a base hit. Here's the first pitch to LT Jimenez with the bases loaded. That one's lined to short, and Tharp's going to catch it on a line. It'll hold everybody where they are. So a quick out number one after the bases became loaded. And it'll leave the bases loaded. But now you got a double play ball that you can try and go get. It'll bring in Morales, who is 0-4-3. He's reached on two errors, lined out, and struck out. So 0-4-4, I should say. That one's high and away for ball one. Morales has scored a run today. Here's the 1-0. Low for ball two. That's a good take from Morales on the off speed that had some drop to it. This will be pitch number 20 in the inning for Garrett Leftwich. Here it comes. That one is grounded to the right side. Might get through the hole. Beber lays out, and the throw on to first won't be in time. Setzer was off the bag, so it's an RBI infield single for Morales, his first hit of the day, and it extends the lead for Maryland State to 8-3. to three. Now batting, right fielder Samuel Canella. It'll bring in Samuel Canella, who had a double his last time up with two outs, ended up coming around to score. Here's the first pitch to him. That's up and in for ball one. one -oh. that one is weighted on, grounded to the left side, it's going to get through. Owen and Tharp both laying out, this one's going to bring in two runs. And in the top of the eighth, the throw, it'll get away. Nobody was covering third. So Morales goes first to third on the single from Canella that brings in two runs. Both Day and Hannibal coming around to score from third and second respectively. And that'll make it a 10-3 ball game. 
Runners on the corner, still one out. Now batting number 13, Alex Rivera. Maryland State is just finding holes right now. They are putting the ball where Carolina is not, simply put. First pitch to Alex Rivera is outside for ball one. Seven run lead for Maryland State. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled back into the fence and it'll put the count even at one and one. This will be pitch number 25 for Leftwich now. Zach Bryant has stopped warming up in the Carolina pen. Off and running is Canella. The throw to second won't be in time and Maybe Morales just got caught sleeping at third, but he won't come in. It's a stolen base for Canella, and now there's two runners in scoring position for Rivera. And the pitch ran inside, and so the count will move to two and one as well. The pitch to Rivera. That's high for ball three. Three one count, left which two runners in scoring position and one out. That one is lined to the left side, but it'll get out of play and it makes the count full. Full count, one out, here's the pitch. That one's fouled back again, and Rivera will stay alive. Three-two count again. One out, here's the pitch. Taken ball four. In the turf, and the bases are yet again loaded. Still one out in the inning. And that's going to draw out Kurt Cabana. You still have the double play ball in effect, but that'll do it for Leftwich. And Zach Bryant's going to make a trip out from the dugout. So the fourth pitcher to come out now for Carolina. third reliever. And we'll take a quick break as Brian gets his warm up in. Score 10 to 3 Maryland State on top.
We're back here for the top of the eighth inning. There is one out as Jordan Daddio enters for his second at bat. First pitch of the day for Zach Bryan is a great curveball that makes its way back into the zone for strike one. Comes in with the bases loaded and one out. And that's a heater that's outside for ball one. That one is foul tipped into the mid of Conklin on a 1-1 count, and Daddy O's behind in the count, one and two. Jordan Daddy O entered the game as a pinch hitter for James Holiday in the seventh, and that's a fastball that's outside. Gets away from Bryant, it makes the count two and two. Two two pitch, fastball low and away, count full. You can't play around with him here because a ball four would bring in a run. Three two pitch, off speed in the dirt, and that will make it eleven to three. RBI ball four. We'll keep the bases loaded. So it'll bring in Michael Bear, the only person in the Maryland State order who has not come to bat in this inning. First pitch, fastball inside corner, called strike one. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. Off speed. Almost got Bear to go around on it, but he holds off. It's one and one. <laughs> Carolina down by eight here in the top of the eighth. That one is a fastball in the opposite batter's box that got Bear to chase, and it's one and two. Bear at risk of donning the golden sombrero. If he were to go down on strikes here, it would be the fourth time today. 1-2. Popped up. Left side. Down the line. And it lands foul. John Owen and Christian Ezel both giving chase, but nobody able to find it. I tell you what, we've talked about it this season at multiple points, but Christian Ezel, what a warrior that guy is. Landed awkwardly on his foot at first base to try to beat out a ground ball and went down as that pitch from Brian is a fastball high and away ball too. And it looked like it was pretty bad. Ezell has roughed up that ankle a couple of times this season. And I, the Disco Turkeys are really, really strapped for depth in the field defensively as the 2-2 pitch is grounded to short. Tharp will pick it up. Beber at second for one. The throw to first. He beat it, so it's... A fielder's choice that Michael Bear will reach base for the first time today. It'll bring in what is the fifth run of the inning, and the score is now 12 to 3 Maryland State, and now we're on 10 run watch. But there are two outs in the inning finally. 12 to 3 ball game, first pitch to Danny Tavares, who comes to the plate for the second time today, is in the dirt for ball one. Second time this inning, I should say, not just today. He's ahead in the count, 1-0. Here's the pitch from Bryant. High and away, ball two. Off speed, got him to watch that one come back into the zone. 
Haven't seen anyone beat that pitch yet. It's 2-1. That one's grounded foul to the left side, and it will make the count even at two. Four walks, three hits in the inning have resulted in five runs as that one's grounded to short again. Tharp will pick it up, throw on to first in time for out number three. So we will go to the bottom of the eighth, and this guarantees that we will have a ninth inning. But Carolina has a lot of work to do when they come to the plate in the bottom half of the inning. The score now, 12-3, Maryland State on top. Back here for the bottom of the eighth inning, Graham Tuck here at Forest Hills High School in the Johnstown, Pennsylvania area, home of the 76th annual AAABA tournament, Disco Turkeys Baseball. And they're down 12 to three as John Owen laces one to third and it's caught on a line for out number one. That is a very hard hit ball by John Owen who is making his first appearances at the plate today, getting the start at third base. And it's a quick out number one. So it'll bring up Dion Tubbs, who is hitless in three tries today. Lined out to the deepest part of the ball field to start the top of the first, and since then has gone down on strikes twice. Carolina down by nine in the first game of their stint in the Triple ABA tournament. At risk of falling it to 0-1. First pitch to Tubbs is swung on and missed on a pitch that was low and away. It's strike one. Oh one count, one out, bottom of the eighth. Here's the pitch to Tubbs. He'll hold off on that one. Probably shouldn't have. It's strike two called. Carolina's got a long way to go, but Tubbs reaching base here would be a great start. It's a one-two count. Catcher sets up outside. Here's the pitch. Count runs to one and two after a very stone-cold take from Dion, who was voted the team MVP this year. 32 hits on the year, and that one is an off-speed strike three called. Third strikeout of the day for Deion Subs at the plate, and it's out number two. It'll bring in Bryson Beber, who on the day is one for three. He's put the ball towards the second base position every time he's come up. He's grounded out the second twice and hit it a little blooper over the second baseman's head.
First pitch to him, high and away, ball one. Bever's been seeing the ball really well lately, so might be able to do something here. He's got one two-out base hit today. Here's the one out in the turf. 2-0 now. On deck is Logan Conklin, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Has a hit, drawn a hit by pitch and a run scored. 2-0 -oh count, two outs. Here's the pitch. Taken. And a good frame from Daddio behind the plate will make it a 2-1 count on a pitch that Beber thought was outside but didn't get the call he wanted. That one is a bit more undeniably outside, and the count runs to 3-1. and one. Brooklyn, the Cougars have taken a four, or five to four lead, I should say, over the Youngstown Creekside Crocodiles as Beber fouls that one off. It'll make the count full. Brooklyn and Youngstown, Brooklyn one and Youngstown, the two other teams in Pool C, the same pool as Carolina and Maryland State. 3-2 count, two outs. Here's the pitch. Fouled off by Beber. Good job to catch up to that high heater. And the count will stay full for the time being. Three, two again, here it is. Grounded softly to the left side. Tough play to be made. The throw on to first in time for out number three. What a play that one was by Morales over there at the hot corner. He's had a great day defensively, and that'll send us to the ninth. Carolina down by nine, and they've got to hold Maryland in order to make their job easier in the bottom half of the ninth. The score, 12-3, to three, Maryland State. We'll welcome you back here to Forest Hills High School in the Johnstown, Pennsylvania area, home of the 76th annual AAABA tournament, where the Disco Turkeys find themselves behind 12 to 3 in the first game of at least three that they will play here in Johnstown. They will play round robin style against the other three teams in their pool, which is Pool C. Today they play the Maryland State Crab Fest. And tomorrow they'll take on the Youngstown Crocodiles, who are behind 5-4 to four in the 8th to the Brooklyn Cougars. And then the top two teams from each pool will advance to single elimination quarterfinal play, bracket style. The number one team from Pool C will play the number two team from Pool D. The number two team from Pool C will play the number one team from Pool D. And conversely for Pools A and B as we get into quarterfinal play. Zach Bryan is on the mound. He got the final two outs of the eighth. And he's back on for the ninth. The count is 0-1 to the leadoff man for Maryland State. 
It's Matt Day, and he takes that one low and away. It's ball one, so the count will even up. Day on the day, 0 for 1. Four walks, three stolen bases, four runs scored, and a strikeout. He'll pop that one up to the right side. Stewart calling everybody else off, and he'll make the catch for out number one, the first time that Day has put a ball in play today. And he'll fall to 0-2, but the four runs scored are far more important if you ask Maryland State. He has outscored Carolina all by himself. And it will bring up Elijah Hannibal for the fifth time, sixth time, excuse me. He scored two runs. He's got a single. A sacrifice bunt. And he'll take the first pitch of this for ball one. That one is ball two as it's low and away. Here's the 2-0 from Bryant. That one finds the zone. It is strike one called. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That one skied into right as well. Stewart going back. He's got a read on it, and he'll make the catch for out number two. So two outs, two F9s. And we are one out away from the bottom of the ninth. Now batting number 11, L.T. Jimenez. It'll bring in L.T. Jimenez with nobody on and two outs. The first pitch will miss the zone. It's 1-0. and up. Due up to start the bottom of the ninth is the 3-4-5 in Carolina's order. It's Conklin, Setzer, and Tharp. Here's the 1-0. That one's grounded to the left side. Owen lays out at third, but he can't get to it. And it's a two-out single for Jimenez. And that has been the story of the day. One of them for Maryland State. There's really been two main storylines in terms of their run output. One of them has been they've found gaps extraordinarily well. It's not like they're hitting the ball all over the yard, but they're just hitting very well-placed balls. They are putting it where Carolina can't get to it, and it's resulted in a lot of runs on the board. The other one is unearned runs and walks issued have been a very large issue for Carolina today. The first pitch to Emmanuel Morales. Strike one. For Bryant, that one won't get the same call, and the count's even. One one pitch in the dirt. Runner on first, two outs, top of the ninth. Maryland State up by nine. And I apologize, it was a 3-0 count. That one will miss the zone, and it'll be a four-pitch walk issued by Bryant. Second consecutive base runner allowed with two outs. Up the bat, right fielder, Samuel Canella. So it'll bring in Canella, who has three hits on the day. He is three for four. He's drawn a walk, reached on an error, Ended up coming around to score. He has two singles and a double. He also has three stolen bases today. And that one is high and deep into right. Stewart along the wall. He'll make the catch for out number three. And that one was about a foot and a half from getting over the wall in right field. But Carolina escapes with no damage done to score into the bottom of the ninth. Same way we started the top of it, 12 to three, Maryland State Maryland on top, and the conclusion of this one coming up after this.
We're back here in the top, excuse me, the bottom of the ninth in the top of the eighth. Or bottom of the eighth, I should say. Brooklyn has extended their lead over the Youngstown Creekside Crocodiles to seven to four. So they are a couple of outs away from advancing to one and zero on the tournament in pool play. Same situation for Maryland State, who finds themselves with a nine-run lead over the North Carolina representative, the Disco Turkeys. And Logan Conklin will start things off in the bottom of the ninth. The first pitch of the inning is taken outside for ball one. one to Conklin. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike one. That was a big cut from Conklin. He was looking to cut the deficit with one swing of a bat, but couldn't connect with it. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's high for ball two. That's 40 pitches now for Joshua Youngberg, who has made quick work of the Disco Turkeys in his three innings. This is only the 11th batter faced through three. That one is fouled off by Conklin. And Conklin fortunate that that was only strike two and not a playable ball because it was certainly out number one. So Conklin with a second life. Conklin 0 for 2 today. Looking to change that here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed on a ball in the turf, and he'll make his way down to first, and the throw is in time for out number one. Maryland State two outs away from advancing to 1-0 and in pool play, and that would be a big step in their hopes in advancing to the quarterfinal round set to be played on Thursday. Hayden Setzer steps in now. He is one for two with a home run, a strikeout, and a walk. That one's inside to him, and it's 1-0. Here's the 1-0 to Setzer, and it is roped on the ground to the right side, picked up by the second baseman, Tavares, and it's in time to first for out number two. So Carolina down to their final out here in the first game of pool play. Dino Tharp is the final hope in the inning for Carolina as of right now. He's 0 for 4 today. Ground out, grounding into a double play and a strikeout. First pitch, fouled off right side. Couldn't quite wait just long enough, and it's 0-1. Final between Cleveland and Zanesville, 13-1. Cleveland comes out on top. Columbus is up 13-7 on the Sayo Grays of Brooklyn. That one is to the left side. This could do it. Picked up, and the throw to first in time from the third baseman for Maryland State Morales, and that'll do it for us from here in Johnstown. The final score, the Disco Turkeys fall to 0-1 in pool play. Final score 12-3, Maryland State coming out on top. There were a couple of storylines that did Carolina in, unable to string together base runners at any point. They did not have more than two base runners at any given time on the base pass. The only time that they did technically was in the first inning when Setzer hit a two-run shot while Logan Conklin was on base. Other than that, any other time that Carolina had a runner on base, it was only one. They also issued far more walks than you can afford to get away with. A lot of unearned runs in the start of this one did them in after Chase Jesse went five innings, allowed only two hits to 24 batters faced, but three errors and six walks counteracted his 11 strikeouts. And it resulted in six runs, only two of them earned. And after that, Carolina was just unable to ever recover. But not all hope is lost yet for Carolina. They're down to 0-1 in pool play, but they're going to need some help if they want to get to Thursday now. They play tomorrow again at 12 o'clock noon against the Youngstown Creekside Crocodiles 
who are in the middle of a game with the Brooklyn Cougars as we speak. And it is seven to four still, Brooklyn on top in the eighth inning. So the Brooklyn Cougars will play these Crab Fest All American from Maryland State tomorrow at noon as well. Carolina will take on Youngstown, and then Brooklyn and Carolina will play at noon on Wednesday. And that'll be Carolina's final two chances to extend their trip beyond Wednesday into Thursday here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. We thank you for joining us. We apologize for the technical difficulties, and we will re-upload this game in its entirety after we get back to the lodging place here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Final score one last time, 12-3, Carolina Disco Turkeys fall to 0-1 on the trip to Johnstown. <laughs>